I'm ready. Let's go. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I know it was a bit short notice, but uh, I see the numbers are climbing. So good morning. Good morning, Tony. Thanks for joining me. So guys, um, I'm sure you've seen the title of the stream. It's about uh, Zebo, the latest couple of releases, the instability that people have talked about and complained about. Um, I want to talk about what changed because, um, I mean, something obviously changed. Uh, we were, I was, and a lot of you guys were unsure what changed. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to tell you the implication of it and I'm going to tell you what you can do to fix uh, your side of things because it's uh, uh, not so much a code issue anymore now that we understand what happened and um, there's a certain responsibility that now falls to the user and this is basically what I want to talk to you about. Um, good morning George, good morning Mario, thanks for joining me. Guys, do yourself a favor um, below the video, if you click on show more, there is a download link to a PDF called Zebo Install Guide version 3.31 plus. I'd like you guys to download it and open it if you can, because that's basically the unscripted script for today's discussion. And um, I'm going to, to use this as a basis to talk to you in general about the Zebo installation. Now, because this is live, I don't have a timetable. I can't tell you to come back in 10 or 20 minutes because we're going to discuss a certain thing at a certain time. Um, uh, good morning, uh, Marty. Welcome. Um, after the video is done, after the rendering is done and it's complete and available for me to edit, I'll come back and I will add a timetable in the description as well for future reference because I don't want uh, somebody to have to slog through an hour or two hours or three hours, however long it takes to get to the important bits uh, that concerns him. In essence, uh, using the installation manual from the description and the link below, I'm going to look at the whole installation of Zebo. I'm going to show you some of the files that Zebo uses, why it's there, why it's not there, why it's important to you. I'm going to show you and explain which portion of the controllers is using the actual controller and which one is influencing the Zebo code. And, you know, we're going to just talk like that and at any point in time please um, hit me with some questions I'll try keep my eye on that screen on my left and let's just take it easy um, I'm not going to rush it and I'm going to try and use my best English possible today so please forgive me it's not my first language if you um, did not know that so I'm just going to try my best and just run through the thing with you This is the uh, PDF document that I created yesterday. Um, I had a quick early morning um, meeting uh, with one of the Zebo programmers and um, he actually clarified a couple of things for me and I'm very grateful for it. And I noticed on the Zebo community group a lot of other people are grateful for um, sorting out the issue of the oscillating and the so-called instability and this is the end result um, Marty I'm okay um, how are you doing the first and basic important thing when we install the Zebo is we obviously need to have the correct version of explain I come across this so many times where people are still trying to use explain version 1 uh, of the 11 uh, series and some other guys in the middle somewhere. Zebo requires explain 1126 or better. 
um, don't even try run the Zebo. The code requires 1126 or better. So please, guys, that's our first requirement. The second thing that I have seen all over Facebook is it seems that there are some people hell-bent on sabotaging or intercepting or just being trolls um, when it comes to the download link for the Zebo. Uh, mods this also goes for the 739 the ultimate um, guys please make sure that you use the official link um, the official link comes from this page over here um, we can open that later it's not important right now um, this is the source of the link this is also where you will find the release notes but we'll get to that now I've just gone and I've clicked and well put the um, Google direct link for you in uh, number 1.2 over here so when you open this this is the official one make sure that you don't use a troll or some other saboteurs link please please make sure you get the appropriate code because that is a problem with some of these links floating around on Facebook all right one other thing that I want to show you guys and I know some of you know this already uh, this is my Google Drive and my link to Zebo is in here if you get to a situation um, if the download limit is exceeded there's a cheap trick to get your version all you need to do is you need to right click on the file and select make a copy if you select any of the other options it's not going to work by selecting make a copy it literally creates a copy of the file in your own Google Drive you click on locate and there it is this bypasses the uh, limit that Google puts on the downloads from here it's in your own Google Drive as long as you've got the space for it it will take it um, all you need to do is obviously now right click and download Okay, so if we if we look at the prerequisites currently, in order for you to have a fully working Zebo, you need this file B seven three seven dash eight hundred X, the version three thirty one full zip. We also have an instance. Uh, we had an instance earlier this morning already, where guys use this folder and use that to download i know in the past it was how we did it i don't know whether this is not being updated it doesn't appear to be updated if we look at the we look at the date sorry it doesn't want to highlight you see this file was updated the last time august the 2nd 2018 lubos is not updating that file i'm not sure whether um there was some other communication on the forum or, or what the issue is but this file is old this folder should be skipped what we are looking at to download for us to get the proper installation i don't know why it's not uh, wanting to allow me to highlight it i hope you guys can see it okay um what you start with is the 3.31 full this is the base um for the current series in in the zebo product so you need to download this file uh, in actual fact I'm thinking I'd like maybe, maybe I must do that myself let's just do that let's just download it we'll download it anyway we know there's no viruses involved and then the next thing that you need to look at is um, you need to download the latest fix file um, the example in this instance is the one with S uh, S is the last alphabetical letter available in the download folder. So we go back there. We can find S and we can actually just download that as well. All right. So the instruction uh, continues further it says please note that the fix file does not contain previous fixes unless specified 
for a long time, Zebo has released um, files and fixes and stuff, and he never specified that it included. That meant that you had to do A, then B, then C, then D in alphabetical sequence until you got to the very last um, file. Recently, he's changed that a bit. He is now incorporating his fixes into the latest fix as well. And this is why we did the full and then the S zip. So we don't need to download anything in the middle. Um, you can, I suppose, in theory, still do that. You can download it, but it is specified. So the wording is still true, unless it's specified. In our case, it is specified. And how do we, how do we know this? Let me quickly open the browser, then I'll show you. Ah, nice new touch to the um, explain org. This is the official Zebo installation download links page. So if we scroll down over here, this is the release notes. This is where it all starts. So the least that you can do is come to this page and you can actually refer to this line over here. It tells you it includes the fix 3.31a up to R. Hi Sentinel, good morning. All right, now if we scroll a little bit down, I hope there is one, so I can just show you practically as well. There we go. You see there, that one includes fixes. This one does not specify any inclusion. So in other words, to get from B, um, or to get to D, you have to install B, C, and D. So you guys have to be very careful of that. This is... A killer if you do it incorrectly and that's where a lot of support issues arise because you didn't pay attention here and I'm, I'm uh, not trying to be nasty guys please I'm just pointing out something that happens to me every day I mean I have to sit and read through all the complaints and everything and then try and figure this out where whereas if you had paid attention to this page things would be so much different. So guys, I really, really ask you nicely, please come and read the release notes. If it says it includes the fix, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Okay, so that should take care of our downloads. Let's see how far they are. All right, the full one is here already. Where is the other one? In fact, not. It is still downloading. So we'll give it a minute or two to just continue. All right, okay. I did not notice this earlier, but this is a very good example to actually uh, show you guys now live. Um, I just want to go back to my drive. All right, so let's just delete that one. Just run through this again. So we have S. We're trying to download it. And it's saying to us, download quota exceeded for this file. You cannot download it this time. Fair enough. And this brings us back to the trick I showed you earlier. All we do is we say make a copy. Now we go and locate it. 
there it is and now we can download it download anyway okay so guys just be with me remember i'm doing this live so i'm sorry if you have to wait in between and all these things but it's part of the deal eh? Let's continue looking at the document. So we've covered where you get the Zebo, which file to get, which fix to get, and how to determine if the fix is the only fix that you need. Um, if you guys have any questions, please just drop it in here, uh, in the comment section. Hello, Andile. No, you've missed a little bit, but the video will be up later. You can catch up. I'm just talking about the installation. Um, of the Zebo and things that have changed, so you're welcome. Guys, I've tried to make the manual as simple as possible. It, it can kind of sound wide, but once you've read through it and you understand what I'm trying to get to, you'll, you'll have the full understanding and you'll see exactly what I'm trying to achieve here. I'm just waiting for that last download now. Uh, yes, George, um, noted. It's a difficult one that um, not everybody sees the videos, not everybody reads the old posts. Um, I've had a couple of very stubborn people contact me on Messenger being very annoyed at the fact that I've asked them to recalibrate and follow the instructions according to the Zebo forum. Um, you get all sorts, my friend, unfortunately, and we just have to cope with them. Some people want to listen, some people are eager to listen, and some people think they're too clever. And unfortunately, that causes friction, and we just have to deal with it, you know, on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, if you do everything that I tell you, and it still doesn't work, it means there's something terribly wrong on your computer, and you need to fix that. Um, there is no reason why it will work for me and a thousand other people and not all of a sudden for you and usually unfortunately it's the people that don't want to listen that you know they try and follow their own mind and so on so All right, okay, the backup is, oh, the download is complete. All right, so let's continue. We now have both of the files that we need according to our prerequisites. Um, the guys joining late, I see there's a couple of new um, users. Please grab this document from the description at the bottom. Just go to show more. There's a link to download it. This uh, first part is the prerequisites. What do you need to get the Zebo going? So the the base file and um, the fix that is uh, now covered. Now, here comes the rest of the fun part. To do the installation, there's two ways of doing it. You are either going to have an existing Zebo in your system, or you're going to have a virgin system with nothing in it, vanilla, completely clean. Um, I've made the notes for both of them, and we can run through both of them. So what we're going to do is let's just do a new installation uh, to start off with. All right, this, what you see at the bottom here, this is my Explain 1126. 
the 1130 I've just closed down because I see it interfered with my pop-ups there so that's out of the way I run two systems I run the 1130 beta on the one side and the 1126 stable and that's usually what I use for my videos anyway so if you look at your uh, explain folder structure under aircraft you are either going to have a B737-800X folder or you're not going to have it. Alright, so for our purposes, for our purposes right now, I'm just going to rename this one. Just call it something else. So we're going to pretend that that file doesn't exist, it's just out of the way. Then, to do a simple installation, all you need to do is open the base file and drag and drop. That's all you do. It includes the FMOD as you guys can see there. A lot of guys still ask where do we find the FMOD. You don't have to worry about it, it's all included, it's part of the download. This uh, latest download um, also includes the new AXP libraries from AudioBird and the standard that was set there. So this is a fully contained aircraft. You don't touch your uh, base aircraft in Explain. Uh, you never really had to do it, although the impression was created by some other guys that you had to, and a, a lot of people followed their lead. Um, the full zip is good enough. That's all you need. And you open it and you drag and drop it. Guys, if I go too fast, please tell me as well. Eh? I don't want to rush um, the installation video today. Amazing how um, slow something copies when you're waiting for it, eh?
All right, I am also thinking out loud. I'm actually going to just delete that file so we really do a complete new install. Okay, so we opened the zip file, we dragged and dropped, extracted this folder in there, and I guarantee you if I start my explain right now, I can get in the zipper and I can go and fly. That is how easy this installation can be. Um, if you take the right file and put it in the right place, it will work. If you take the wrong file, or if you put it in the wrong place, we'll get trouble. So rather just follow the basic installation instructions. And just to show you something, as a matter of interest, every single Zebo download contains a readme.txt and very, very few people read this file. It clearly states where you need to put it. Clearly tells you. And you will be surprised how many people go and put this thing in the wrong place and how many people do the weirdest and wonderful things. So also this file includes your change log. All right. So over here, you can also see what is included and what is not. So we, I don't know why that was put there anyway, but this is the latest one, obviously, S. Yes. So that's that's the first base package, and then you go to there, so uh, whatever. Um, the fact of the matter is, if you don't go to the website to actually go check what is needed, you can find it in the readme. It is also supplied in... Um, in your uh, uh, fix, let me show you. There's the fix. Let me close the other one. If you go there, you have the same README, and it also contains the change lock. It also tells you what the prerequisites are. So there, there really isn't a reason why you would not know or be able to figure out what is required and what's not required. It's all there. Now, I'm not saying don't ask. Please feel free to ask any time. Um, but I'm also pointing out the fact that the Zebo team has done everything in their power to actually make it easy to show you where things are and what you need to know. So let's leave it at that. Um, now we get to the section where we obviously have a Zebo mod. Okay, this could be any version. The version number is irrelevant. What is relevant and what is important is the actions. How do you update this thing? All right, so let's read. Um, in the manual, I have specified for you a couple of very important files and what they do. We can look at them just now. In actual fact, let's just split the screen a little bit. Can help us. Right, so there's two ways of literally upgrading it. You can, once you've identified obviously the correct file, you can simply go and you can drag and drop. All you do is extract the contents of the fix into the existing Zebra file. As you can see the highlighted files, those are the ones that were copied over. Those are the new ones. And if we open the readme, we can actually find the latest release note specifies to us that this is version S that has just been copied into our Zebo. So if we start the explain up and we go and look at um, the tablet and we press that little question mark thing, we will see that this is now S. That's the one way of doing it. Now, you can, if you like, I've specified it there, you can pile the one fix on top of another fix. In most cases, I guarantee it will work, but there's the odd chance that at some point in time it's just not going to work or it's going to give you an issue. And then what do you do? So my recommended upgrade path is to identify the important files, make a backup of them, and then what we do is we delete the contents of the Zebo folder, 
and we start with a fresh installation. So I actually need to just go grab my other file. So we can follow the manual completely. Cancel, that is not what I wanted to do. Cancel, yes. All I want is this one. Why do you do that? Yeah. All I want is that. All right. So, let's talk about the files. Let's give you some education which one does what. Our B738 underscore perfs text. Let's find it. Mm, okay, it's not here because we haven't run the simulator yet. Okay. Let's do that. Uh, sorry about that. Here we go. Okay, that's going to take a minute or five to start up in the background. So we're going to skip that file for now. But basically, let me explain what it is. So after you've run the Zebo, it will create that file for us. It will then save the important stuff like the camera presets. If you are using the x 11 camera presets and you've created some fancy views for yourself, if you lose this file, you will cry because the information is stored there so at any point in time if you clean out this folder and you put a new Zebo installation in there you're going to have to start from scratch so this is a very important file then for the guys using the VR if you've made any custom changes or anything like that please that file as well it needs to and there's the file over there it needs to be backed up it is an important file. Then, the C-list file comes with the full installation of Zebo. Um, it runs uh, under the X Checklister plugin. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it, but it's a very nice plugin if you want to have a, a checklist in your um, uh, aircraft. I can show you what that looks like later if you're unfamiliar with that. Um, so, the C-list is given in the full installation but um, uh, Matho and myself and uh, obviously the creators of the product have changed this uh, to obviously reflect um, my checklist uh, that I created for the Zebo. so I obviously modified it so for me this file is very important if I lose that file it means I need to go and recreate it now I've obviously got backups on another place but for you guys if you update this thing and you're using X Checklister as your checklist file um, make sure that you back this one up then X camera I make use of X camera if you don't have X camera obviously it's irrelevant but that is all my preset views for X camera and for me that's a very important file to have the other important uh, and basically last important file or folder to have is the liveries folder and the reason that this is important is each and every one of the liveries contains a CFG file. And if you lose that file, you're going to lose the portion of the settings contained within this file. So that's what it looks like inside. It basically gives you a couple of things that uh, you can set in your Zebo tablet and it will keep track of it. Now, if you lose that file, it literally means you're going to have to redo the settings, like I said. So 
it's important and the easiest way for me to just do this is I take the liveries and all the other files that are relevant and I'm waiting for the other one to come up now as well um, and I literally just make a backup for myself we can take VR config we're taking C list X camera and deliveries and the only other one that is missing is the one that gets created after you run the Zebo. so I'm not going to wait for it um, what I simply do is I use my zip utility I use 7 zip and all I do is I add a little archive It's probably not going to like doing this while I'm running explaining the background. We'll see just now. Definitely not liking that. So let's just cancel it. And we can resume the last flight. The luxury when you're actually making a video is you can cut out all the dead spots, you know, when you're sitting twiddling thumbs and waiting for things to happen. So apologies um, if it is very time consuming today, but it is live, so we just live with it. Uh, you on? Are you on the stream now? Guys, um, what does the microphone sound like now? I know that the vacuum cleaner was going in the background, so I'm sorry I didn't realize it was going to interfere that much if, if that was it. Can you just let me have some indication if the mic is okay now? Thanks, Maria.
<laughs> the reason I didn't worry about it was because it was downstairs. I didn't realize that the mic was going to be so sensitive that it would pick it up. I'm just waiting for the zebra to come up on the screen. Well, I had one complaint, so I had to talk about it, uh, George. I don't want to waste anybody's time if they can't hear me. Then I'll have to go and kill that vacuum or whatever I need to do to get the sound right. Eh? I mean, it's important what we're discussing here. All right, so it takes a couple of seconds for my explain to stabilize um, from the point where it gets to the screen. Looks like it's okay now. All right, so let us change the views again. Excellent, Maria. Right, so let's quickly look at our folder if that file has been created now for us. Here we go. Okay, so so before we go too far, just as a matter of interest, that um, C list file and the X checklist that this little thingy is the X checklist that and basically flight plan root file. This is what it does. So it gives you a checklist in the cockpit, and you Download. can then fuel time and load. Uh, you can then basically, I'm gonna, just going to do one more. Calculate. Thrust limit. Um, you can then obviously go through the whole checklist, put your ticks in the right place at the right time. So this is the X checklist that that C list file is, re, is referring to. All right, so the next step now is to kill explain. We want to do that. Thinking out loud, yes, let's kill explain. All right, so now we are back to these files. So now we have the B738 config. So it's not about just starting the Zebo. You've actually physically got to click the save button in the tablet. That then generates the config uh, file for us. We have that one, the C list for the X checklist uh, file. And then we have deliveries. All right, where is that VR config? We'll just take that one because it's in the list. One, two, three, four, five. All right, and then what I do is I simply add it to an archive. And now it runs, obviously. And the point in this exercise is every so often, after piling up 
on your fixes, one on top of another and something goes wrong. This is the method that I use to then just clean everything out and start over. So I don't want to lose my important files. I don't want to lose my settings. I don't want to lose my views and things like this. And these are the important files. All right, so there we have it. There is our magic little folder. And what we then do is, we've obviously identified a problem somewhere. We need to do a proper upgrade and we just go shift and delete. We just kill everything. That is what makes Zebo so nice for me because the troubleshooting isn't that difficult. I mean, if you get to a, a brick wall and you've nowhere to go beyond that, all you do is ju just delete and start again. So we've deleted. That takes care of point uh, 2, point 3, point 2. And now we are back to the installation side of things. Let's just pull this down a little bit. All right, so what we do is we unzip the one that's called full now just be careful guys don't go and create an extra folder now eh? we actually want to go into the b737800 folder control a drag and drop Well, this is busy. Um, the obvious next step is just to unzip our S uh, fix that includes all the other fixes for us. And then I've made a note here. Please note that if you need more than one fix file according to the release notes, then you have to download and install them in alphabetical order one after another. If you do it the wrong way, you're going to get stuck somewhere. All right, and the last step is going to be to extract our backup just back in place. Uh, George, you can obviously copy them to a different folder. You can do whatever you want. This is just my technique. Um, there is no right or wrong. 
in in a backup as long as you have a backup and as long as you know where to find it when you need it again those are the only two prerequisites the the main thing is the information in these files are precious i mean it costs you time and effort to create them you don't want to lose them so um well, do whatever you need to do to make a backup all right there we go there's the base file back in place and we can then just go and grab the update same story as before the only difference really is that we didn't stack a whole bunch of fixes one on top of another that's the only difference so you're minimizing the risk of a corruption in a file and you're minimizing some funny error somewhere and and this is i mean it's not difficult it's time consuming but not difficult and this is definitely a big 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 tip i can give you guys if yeah you, you get a funny in zebo zap the folder get rid of it put in a new one Right, and all we do is we go and we replace all the files. This will take our backup, overwrite the ones that we've just taken from the downloads. And when we start up our explainer now, Zebo, we will have all our settings in place. All right, now I want to give you guys a, a little preview, let's call it that. I'm going to discuss the unknown files the are files that zebo or the zebo product puts into explain that's not in this folder and it also contains some of your settings and i'm going to actually show you which ones they are i'll show you the settings inside of them and i want you to also keep that in the back of your mind for any type of backups or for any corruptions that might occur and we, we're going to show you that in a short while so stay tuned it's very important those ones all right so that takes care of our installation let us split the screen again all right now in order to truly enjoy the zebo mod as it was designed um, there are a couple of things that we have to do and I want to start this portion of the discussion and tell you what changed. All right. In version J, the Zebo mod made use of a large chunk of explain code. It was important, it was stable, and it was what needed to be done at that point in time. When version K came around, Zebo bypassed a big portion of the explain code and he created his own code that is the big change that happened that i think not a lot of people are aware of from then on guys started seeing oscillations this up and down roller coaster and it's not following vnav and it it started out with people complaining that zebo is unstable it's it's not stable and the fact of the matter is that even I, I have to uh, be honest, I didn't realize exactly what was happening at that point in time. And it, it took a, a conversation with one of the team members to get me completely into the picture. Thank you, Richard. Thanks for the subscription there. Um, it, took, it took us a while to figure this one out. Now, obviously, after talking with a programmer who made the changes and uh, who's involved with this and him you know explaining it to me i want to explain it to you um, the stability augmentation is the section of the code that we are talking about amongst others zippo created new code that basically takes care of your um, autopilot the servo motors it takes care of uh, the vnav basically 
I think we can get very technical. It's not necessary. In other words, all the code. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Richard. Um, just noticed your message there. In other words, what basically happened is the guys that had the explain code active. Oh, that came from somewhere. I'm also ready. Um, what happened was some of us had the explain code running, so it interfered with the Zebo code. Some of us did not have the explain code active, so it never actually interfered. And that is why I got the one question the one day on the Zebo group, and they asked me, but why are you not experiencing what we are experiencing? And I, I think I said something to the effect, I wish I knew. Okay, so to make a long story short, let me let me get there. Let me show you what has happened. All right, um, I'm going to just start my explain. Funny now that I'm on a stream, I forget where my icons are. Like a silly. Anyway, let's let's get everything on the screen again. So we have that, and we have that. All right. While explain is starting, let me show you on this document. If you scroll down, uh, what page is this? Where do we see? Oh, page five. I'm going to show you this in explain as well. The way it was described by the guys to me yesterday is this. In your stability augmentation, these sliders will influence your ACF file. That is your aircraft file. So if we go back to the Zebo folder, we are talking about that file. That is the aircraft file. That is what makes the aircraft. That's where your calculations are. That is where everything pertaining to any aircraft in explain is kept. This is what the developer creates, what interacts with explain and gives you the fly dynamics. It gives you the autopilot, it gives you everything about the aircraft. This is the heart of it all. So the moment you mess with those sliders, you mess with this file. All right. And the moment you mess with this file, you literally mess with the Zebo code. And the only way to stop it and to allow the Zebo code to do what it needs to do is to pull these sliders to the left. All right. So the guys that had any settings in here, the way I understand it, are the guys who had the problems. They And depending on how far you pulled this and the amount of interference it, it created, explain created onto this file, the bigger the disturbance was. So the, the higher the roller coaster and the bigger the dips. All right, and that is in essence what changed. You know, without getting too emotional and too deep and too technical into it, this is the portion of the code that changed. All right, if we look at the sliders on the left hand side, the pitch, the roll, and the yaw, this influences and gets influenced by your physical controller. So, I've, I've made a little note here that if you move the sliders to the right, you're going to have the feeling that your aircraft gets heavier. And if you move it to the left, it's like, you know, getting lighter. And that's, that's why you find, I've made the, the joke about the pit special there, that's why you find that you can take a 70 ton aircraft and you can flip it around by a very small motion. That's because of these sliders over here. Now, we all have our own opinion. Again, there is no right and wrong here. This is up to you. It's, a, it, it, it's talking to your perception. It is expecting your perception. So whatever you decide to put there, go for it. As long as you're happy, I'm happy. Um, I personally use it full 100% because I like to feel that I'm actually trying to fly a 70-ton aircraft if you understand what I mean. That's just my perception. It could be my controllers giving me that. I don't mind. It, oh, I don't really care. It, this is for me. 
So guys, at any point in time, go play with those sliders, but please don't touch those sliders. This is the single most important setting that will affect the zebra. And I tell you what, the moment I brought mine down to zero, I flew my favorite flight that you guys might know of already between Lisbon and Porto. I flew it on version R like never before. It was so smooth. It was magic. And um, I'm, I'm hoping that this is going to give you the same. It should. By design, it should give you the same. But I want you to have the understanding as well as why and what not and so on. So I hope this, this helps you guys. I'm just waiting for that installation also. Um, so I'm just scrolling back up. The other thing that is very important when it comes to the Zebo, and it might or it might not be as important in, in any other aircraft, is the actual calibration of your joysticks. And this is, this is where I got the resistance from some of the users yesterday. The guys really didn't like the idea of me asking them to go recalibrate the equipment. So guys, I apologize, and I apologize for being um, adamant that you have to do it, but you're going to have to do it. Um, Richard, I'm going to show you a little trick here. Um, it's not supposed to have any influence on any other aircraft, and I'll show you why. Um, I'm just going to switch over to explain uh, after it's just settled. I just want to watch the FPS there, and then we'll show explain is magic it's lovely it it is fantastic because of the following it gives you the ability to create different control profiles for different aircraft and if you look over here at the very bottom there that's where you set it up and you will actually see if you zoom in there let's see if we can just make it a little bit bigger um one more you see here, my active profile for my controllers is called Zebo. So I can go into Manage Profiles. Um, Maria, I'll look at that just now. If you go into your Manage Profiles, you can create multiple, as many as you want. So, um, And you can set up control sensitivities and the actual different buttons for each aircraft. So I would highly recommend that you go and create an active profile, call it Zebo or My Zebo or whatever you want to call it to identify it for Zebo, and then go and set up everything specific to the Zebo in that profile. So all you do is there in, on that little arrow over there, when you change between aircraft, it actually auto detects. But if it doesn't, you can simply just click on the drop down arrow and you can you know just go to Zebo or whatever other aircraft you have. I'll show you my profiles just now. Um, Mario, let me look at your question quickly. Um, what do you mean each version? Um, are you talking each aircraft or each um, Zebo version? I expect or suspect that you're talking about Zebo. Um, okay, let, let me explain it this way. I don't think so. Okay, each Zebo fix. I don't think you have to do each Zebo fix. Um, if you get funnies, I would suggest do it. But if you do this once, in my mind, let me show you this quickly. The information gets stored in your explain under uh, some more, back some more. Uh, we get output and then we get preferences. There is the control profile folder, and that is your calibration file. So in my mind, unless this calibration file gets damaged, you shouldn't do it again. Or the alternative of the fact would be if Zebo changes something that warrants it again. You understand? So until one of those two things happen, I don't suspect any requirement for having to redo each fix of the Zebo to recalibrate everything, which is also, I think, a plus point for, for explain. I mean, this is marvelous to have little profiles like this that you can go and play with. Does that answer your question?
Okay, cool. Okay, I'm just waiting for explain to come. All right, so we go to our controllers now. Uh, Pro flight yoke. Why is it showing me this? I don't have a throttle quadrant like this, guys. By the way, I actually have a CH throttle quadrant. So let's go to the yoke. Great stuff. Right, you guys must um, jump in when you need to ask or say something. Eh? Um, all right, so here we are. This is our controller. Under control sensitivity, you find this page as per the manual that uh, we're reading from. And it's easy enough to just slide these things. There you can see everything is set to zero. Now, under manage profiles, you will see here I've got the 407 for the helicopter. I've got the 747 because that obviously um, uses four throttle levers instead of two. Uh, I've got the flight factor A320. I've got my single engine, my twin engine. So that, that's basically for GA. Then I've got my Zebo. And um, all I have to do is just click on the drop down list and then I get my appropriate profile. So I can go to twin engine and I can literally choose any combination of keys specific to this profile. It will not influence my Zebo profile. And when I'm ready, I just go back to Zebo. Um, so, so this is a very important and valuable thing that you guys should really investigate if you're not using this. It really makes a world's difference. Because by using this, you will not damage anything else or interfere with any other aircraft. All right, so that takes care of that portion of things. Let's just get back to the manual. Oh, it doesn't things actually do this. All right, so what we need to do is we need to calibrate. This is the requirement. So to jump from version J to K and the rest, you have to do this at least once. All right, so we ignore the rest of the axis because I don't have that throttle. Next and next done as easy as that so now we know that the pitch and the roll is taken care of uh, rudder pedals I want you guys to have a look at this do you see there there is a bit of flutter it is actually moving I'm not stepping on this thing at all. Now it's stopped on its own. But if I just touch it, I mean, I'm literally touching it with the slightest, slightest touch. You have to look out for this. Good morning, Ryan. Welcome. Um, I, I'm going to show you something about this later on. This is very important as well. Every, any and every such little fluttering can influence the Zebo, and Zebo was clever enough to have the foresight to build this into the tablet and we're going to counter this in the tablet in the Zebo. so you'll see this just now but let's calibrate this as well finish and done all right so that takes care of the ordinary calibration um, I've just noticed that I didn't put the um, pedals in the document but I think it goes without saying that any any controls needs to be done so um, I might update that at some point in time but uh, I think you guys know what I mean so right we've done the calibration we've made sure that this setting is proper and now we can move to the tablet. Right, I'm just going to... Um, Mario, I think that um, that's a laminar thing. They did just simply didn't include the image in their code. It's not there. Um, at some point in time, they'll probably add the image. Um, but I don't know really why. I mean, I'm guessing. Okay, so... I just want to change the capture method here because otherwise we're going to get that black screen a lot now. Come on. There we go. All right, so now it's capturing the explain for us. All right, guys, so on page six, the next step to get this very good experience now.
Mm, I'm going to override this thing. Oops. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I've just killed my own file. I was supposed to enable it before I copied that file back. Oh, I didn't copy it back. Let's have a look. See which which mistake did I make? Yeah, I copied the file in before enabling uh, Xcamera. Listen, learn, guys. Remember, don't uh, do what I do. Do what I say. That's just a joke, eh? Just a joke. Uh, what did I do with that file now? Oh, grab it quickly. I'm just extracting my X camera quickly, otherwise I... I am not going to be able to show you what I want to show you. Unable to find view ID 2. Here we go. Okay, all sorted. So now we're going to zoom in onto this little baby. We need to go to settings and then we need to go to the calibration button. Now the moment I come close, I mean, I, I'm stepping on the pedestal. I'm not even stepping on my um, rudder pedal. Look at the fluctuation there. And they have stepped on it. You see, now the more I step on it, the bigger the change in value is. All right, now, the idea here is to look at each one of your values. If you pull the pitch, use the pitch, it changes. If you do the roll, it changes. So the idea is you move your controller and then let it center. If it centers and there is no fluctuation, it means that there is no noise on the line. So it shouldn't have any influence on disconnecting auto throttle, disconnecting the autopilot. But if you get a situation where you're getting this, you see there's a, there's a flutter. It's like a little hummingbird, uh, you know, hovering to get this little bit of honey. It, it doesn't stop. The moment you get that, you need to understand that Zebo is going to know about it. The Zebo code needs to do something with it. So it's either going to kill your autopilot, it's going to kill your auto throttle, it's going to make some maneuver somewhere that you just didn't want. And <laughs> this is where Zebo was very clever. All you do is you enter a value until it stops. And it's gone. Now I'm going to touch it. I mean, that's not supposed to do movement. I'm touching it a little bit harder. So that's also not sufficient because the moment... Let's go for four. The moment that I just put my foot on the pedal, Zebra is going to react. So I've now set it to four and I've literally got both my feet on my pedals. I am moving it in the null zone and there's no movement. So there's no interference with the Zebo code. The Zebo doesn't see the, the movement. So it can't disconnect something and it can't react to it because it literally sees nothing. And all you need to do now is literally do it with all your control surfaces. So that's pitch, that's roll. Center the thing and if it doesn't move and if it doesn't move when you touch it, yeah, roll yes I've got to move it a bit to get some reaction so I'm happy it means that my controllers are clean and you're gonna have to do this for each one the moment that is set I guarantee you're gonna have a much better flight experience than before all right so that's the first first one that we need to take care of in terms of the tablet calibration uh, before we go on, um, in the manual as well, I just want wanted to show you guys, please guys, when you do this, remember to save it. So 
the way to save it is to go to the right hand side of the tablet just click anywhere here on the right go to save and just please make sure you save your changes because otherwise it's going to get dropped and the next time you come back into um, explain and try and use the Zebo again you, you will not have your changes so if we go back to the settings and the hardware uh, sorry calibration obviously it's now saved um, I'm probably suffering of some kind of OCD I like to save a lot so you'll see me save a lot all right so that takes care of the ordinary calibration for us at this point in time uh, there's one more calibration I want to show you but I'm going to leave it until later because it is later in the manual all right um, at this point in time for the guys who don't want to watch further it's okay this is done this aircraft is exactly where Zebo wants it to be on version S you have installed it correctly you have calibrated your controller and you've calibrated your tablet um, you should be able to do a perfect flight right now there's no reason to continue unless you want to know a little bit more so I've got a couple of surprises that um, I've added some nice to have information and you're welcome to stick around for that too I'm anyway going to give it so um, it's here but this aircraft as it is here is yours for the taking right now if you fly it and you've done everything up to this point as described in this uh, stream in this video um, you will have a good experience in the uh, VNAV um, and you should not have oscillation if you do it's troubleshooting time we're gonna have to look at it again I didn't have any this for me was like perfect and I had the most awesome flight um, so I really hope and obviously I would appreciate any feedback if you guys are still struggling then we just have to look at it case by case and see how we sort it out but anyway let's continue I'm going to change my capture again so just bear with me Remember we talked a little bit earlier on about some other files that Zebo uses that you might not know about. Um, the document stated earlier the, the ones that were in the Zebo folder. But I want to quickly show you something else. If you go to your default explain folder, those three files are put there by the Zebo mod. Right, so... What are they and what do they do? Let's open it up. Mm, doesn't like to be opened all three at once it seems so let's just do one at a time. So this is the B738X CFG. If you look at all of this information, you will see that this basically contains all the shared settings from the Zebo tablet. So, so where you've got the livery CFG that will save things pertaining to that airline and that livery, this one uh, actually now saves a lot of the rest so if you ever get into a situation where you really really need to troubleshoot and you are suspecting a, a, a problem you know corruption or something these three files will definitely have to be removed as well you can't do a clean installation without removing them and then obviously you have to just reset up everything but at the same time I would suggest to make a backup of these files somewhere after you've done your configuration because in the event that you have to replace your Zebo folder in aircraft 
you don't lose the rest of your configuration. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, this is important stuff. It's cost you a lot of time and effort to go and set up the tablet. So in my mind, it's worthwhile just backing them up. If we open the second one, you will see that this is where we did that hardware calibration. This contains the hardware calibration. And according to these settings, the Zebo will react and interact with you then in flight or on the ground, wherever. So again, this is kind of important. And this is a nice one. We open the status. That's your GPS location of where your aircraft is currently or where it was left the last time. So that's just a nice to have, but also a good one. Did you guys know about these files? Okay, that brings me to the troubleshooting side of things again. Where is my... Come on. Cool, Ryan. Thanks for the answer. Thanks, George. Now you guys do, eh? So I hope it, it's got some value for you. All right, I made a quick note about the Zebo troubleshooting in here. Um, one of the things that we've touched on is the clean install. I think once you've gone through this manual and you've just thought about what could be wrong, um, there's not much that can really go wrong. Yes, there can be a situation where you get a corruption. The explain PRF file loves to go corrupt when you fly the Zebo for some reason and nobody's been able to tell me why that thing goes corrupt. And you guys know then you can't click with a mouse and the mouse cursor goes funny. It's also, I've, I've put it in this document, I'll show you that to you later. So, I've tried to cover most of it, but at the end of the day, if you really don't know which way to go, my suggestion would be to do a clean install. All right. You can obviously run, you know, through the steps of the installation. You can make sure that it seems okay. But if you really get stuck, guys, just do a clean install. That's the easiest way of troubleshooting the Zebo. Right. Then we've got the issues. Um, there are two known issues that you guys should take note of and to fix them is rather easy. The first one is the mouse pointer. I didn't realize it was going to be on the next page. So here we go. What basically happens sometimes when we fly the Zebo, the explain PRF file and these two lines, those two specifically, goes corrupt. All right. All right, so what happens is, for some reason, instead of having all the zeros, there's the file, or whatever coordinate it is expecting, or you tuned in the last time, it gives us a value similar to that highlighted in blue. The moment that happens, your mouse cursor dies. Um, you can't click and scroll and do the normal things. So, there's three ways of fixing it. The normal quick fix is go into the default 747, open it up, click and turn a couple of knobs and buttons and then go back. The second way of fixing the file is to just copy those two lines and just pasting it into the right position, just overwriting the configuration error. So you want to get rid of that nonsense over there. All right. And then the last way, um, which is like my go-to when all else fails, is all I do is I delete the Zebo 
uh, preference files. Ach, not this Ebo, the explained preference files. So we go to output, preferences, we go find that sucker, and we just delete it. We just get rid of it. Now, if you do that, and if you have controller profiles and things like that in place, you should be okay. It's just going to rebuild it, and it's going to be fine. It's going to be better than before. It's going to be fixed. If you don't have control profiles, chances are very good uh, that you're going to just have to reset up all your controls and everything. But if all else fails in explain, and this doesn't only count for Zebo, it counts for everything. Anything in explain that gives you a problem, this is like the old CFG in the other simulators we will not name right now. That's the one. You just kill that file, let explain rebuild it, and it fixes most of the other issues in explain. All right. Then there is a situation where you are on the runway, you hit the toga button, and you are expecting an N1 of, let's say, 96.9% uh, from toga, and, I mean, your whole takeoff is planned around that, your SEL temperature is correct, everything is done, and you look at your uh, N1 gauge, and you're getting 89, or you're getting 91, and you go, where's the other 10%, or where's the other 5%, and you don't know where it is, um, it's because of XP UIPC, guys. Um, a lot of us use XP UIPC because of the virtual airlines that we fly for and other utilities or other interface connections that we need with Xplain. So I'm not aware of any other fix other than this. There's two ways of fixing this. The moment you spawn into Xplain, anywhere, uh, come on. Anyway, I've spawned on the runway, obviously, yeah, for, for our purposes. All you do is you go to flight, flight configuration, change your location, anywhere else, and you click confirm. The moment you do that, somewhere in the background without getting too technical, the systems re two. sorry the systems re-energizes reinitializes and the problem is gone if you do your pre-flight now and if you go and hit the toga button you will get n1 um so i've i've waited and wondered a long time until somebody came up with a solution but that is how easy it is the other way of fixing that problem is to go to the developer uh, option at the top there and all you do is you uh, reload the current aircraft um, it takes a bit longer and it's just cumbersome so i prefer to just move so i'll spawn on one position just move to another position and i know xp uipc is not interfering with me anymore and i can literally do my setup and take off and go another thing that i have found a lot in all the forums and everywhere is people don't seem to un understand there's a difference between n1 um, pressing the n1 button over there and actually going toga now if you look at your throttle quadrant that is the toga button over there i challenge anybody watching this stream or the video later to try and maneuver like i did press that button while you are gunning down the runway and you're trying to steer the aircraft, you know, make your movement like that, and then go and try and press that button. You're not going to do that. Unless you map that button to a joystick, which I've done, um, the only other way to get to Toga is to press the mic button. All you do is press mic. The moment your N1 goes over 40%, that one will go, uh, well, it will become alive. You can press it, and it will actually go into your takeoff go-around mode as designed by Boeing. Uh, Kappa, I will give you the answer in a short while. I'll find it for you just now. It's a program called X Splasher. It was written by um, Sergio from Helisimmer. He wrote it. And a uh, nice guy that um, met him spent, uh, here on Discord and spent some time with him. Very, very uh, excellent person. And um, you should be able to just search on 
explain space x splasher let me type it for you quickly all right so all you then do is you just create a whole bunch of png files throw it into the required folder and every time explain starts up it will give you a different splash screen all right so right that takes care of the toga button and the xp uipc problem i hope that is going to help some of you guys um, to, to sort out your n1 all right then in terms of other tips and tricks um i've had the question many times why do i only have two landing lights we used to have four um, the answer is in the tablet. If you go to settings and you go to, I just need to remember it's one of these. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Optional accessories. The moment you choose halogen lights, you're going to have your old lights back. The moment you put it on LED, you're back to two. All right, what else can I tell you? Then, um, you can select whether your landing lights must pulse or not. Um, I've had a couple of guys react to some of my streams and videos and say, oh, the lights are, landing lights are flashing. This is where you can switch it on or off. Apparently, it's good for chasing the birds away and uh, preventing bird strikes. So you can decide whether it needs to pulsate or not. All right, your HUD can be switched on and off here. I just created a little shortcut for myself. So I press H for HUD and it just you know, brings it up, takes it back. All right, another favorite question, even to this day, many, many months later, is how do we get to steer the Zebo on the ground? And the answer is, yeah, the easy answer is just select your, and that will link your tiller that you see over there to your uh, rudder pedals that's just the easiest way of doing it now earlier when we talked about the calibration for uh, the pitch and the yaw and the roll um, I made mention of another calibration that is very useful uh, Santos from the group actually pointed it it out to me one day uh, it didn't really bother me but my controls here did something like this it went crazy and as you can hear it's highly irritating click 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 the whole time so if you have throttle noise or if you have any noise on your controller if you have the the situation where you sometimes get a lot of thrust sometimes little and this thing isn't behaving the same that we did earlier in the previous calibration is done here under throttle noise lock now i had to use a value of three to get my throttle stable um, I highly recommend that you guys come and look at the setting at some point in time sorry for the interruption All right then um, like I said, I highly recommend you guys go and play with this because this is also going to influence the obviously the thrust that you get and the control that you have over your um, throttle levers. As you can see, at some point in time, it still flutters a little bit, but it's it's within reason. It's not the end of the world. So all I'm saying is that that is the setting that you're looking for. All right, then um, speaking to the guys with the auto throttle disconnect problem, Zebo has given us the auto, thro thro no, auto throttle engage lock throttle option. You can actually experiment with this. Um, I'd like some feedback at some point in time from some of you guys how effective this is. I, uh, I'm very curious. I don't have the problem, so I don't use it. Uh, which makes it difficult for me to gauge it but this is for specifically for the guys with the auto, thro auto throttle disengage problem all right the next setting the yoke auto center 
in conjunction with uh, realism settings. If you look at yoke movement, you've got off uh, disconnect or CWS. Um, those two, this one, and wait, 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 this one, right, is specifically made for the guys that have autopilot disconnects. All right, so basically, Zebo is trying to eliminate on top of an additional to the calibration that we've already discussed. He's trying to make it easier and um, less sensitive or whatever you want to call it for the system to disconnect the autopilot. So what I picked up from the forums is the guys actually activate the yoke auto center. They go to uh, realism settings and they put, put the yoke movement off. In other words, so any any yoke movement is not going to influence the autopilot. The autopilot should stay on. Again, I don't have this problem, so I've not been able to test it. And um, any feedback on that would be appreciated. So um, that takes care of autopilot. Uh, one more nice to have and I think this is the last one and that will be the end and time for Q&A and stuff is if we go to the aircraft configuration on page 2. I also see not a lot of guys are aware of this. You can actually sync your Q&H and your minimums uh, to either the captain or the first officer. In the beginning it was a question of the moment you change your setting over there. You had to go to that side and you had to change your setting over there. And if you change your Q&H, you had to go there as well. You know, and if you're flying single pilot in the simulator, it's nice to simulate that realism, but it's not practical. Not when the workload is what it is and you're trying to go through a transition altitude and doing your landing planning and all those things. It just becomes cumbersome. And the easy answer for that, guys, and the, that's the last trick for now, is just sync the two. And before you leave, whatever you do, make sure you save anything and any any of the changes that you have made. George, that's a laminar problem, the strobe lights flashing when going through the clouds. Uh, somebody told me the other day, and as far as I know, he's on the stream with us, that X uh, Enviro actually minimizes that flashing effect. I, I go on his word, I've no reason to doubt him. Um, so it's an it's not a Zebo problem. That is a, a laminar problem as far as I know. So I hope they fix it. Okay guys, um, that concludes my rambling. I hope it adds some value and that you guys can go and review the video once it has been rendered and completed on the YouTube site. If you have any questions, please let me know via Facebook or uh, as such. Um, I am available if you guys want to do some Q&A now. You're welcome. Throw me with some questions. Let's see if I can answer them or if I need to refer them somewhere else. Go for it. Um, ask, ask your questions if you want. It's a pleasure, Ryan. Thanks, uh, guys. Let me just thank you all for being here. Um, it's lovely to have all the viewers and um, to see your interest. I hope you guys get it right, and I hope you guys can really go and enjoy uh, the S version today. And um, I know that, that the problems are sorted for you now. I have a quick question for you. Let's, let's do it this way. Let me show you. This is also actually a tip and a trick I could have put in um, and I just thought about it.
Do you guys know that the ACARS is working and that you can actually request the METAR for a particular airport? And have you guys used this before? Oh, oh beep, beep. There you go. Have you guys seen this and have you used it? That's always an interesting question. And are you aware that you can also, in certain circumstances, I don't know why it doesn't work with all the airports, but you can actually get your weather over here as well. Something also I've just thought about this, I don't know if you guys know this, but you can click on your question mark and it will actually tell you the release of the Zippo that you are currently using. Remember that used to be on the FMC, so this is where you find it now. And another question. Do you guys know that you can switch the light in your wet compass? You can switch it on by clicking somewhere over there. Makes a difference at night. Hey, morning John, how are you? Okay guys, well that wraps it up for me. I can sit here for a couple of more minutes if you guys want to ask questions, but um, it seems that you guys are all okay on your side, you're very quiet. So um, I'm going to say goodbye, good luck, let me know if I can help you um, sort out some more of the, the issues, but have a look at the video, pause, rewind if you have to, read the manual. And for those guys that joined late, uh, look at the description below the video, there is a, the manual that I was working from, the download link is there. So you can print it out, keep it somewhere close by and just refer back to it at some point in time. And then we'll see each other on Facebook later. Thanks for being here, I really appreciate your interest and joining me on this video and stream.